healing of a heart palate. Uh, a 33 year old female came to the ENT OPD with chief complaint of swelling over right side of the heart palate since one month. Patient was apparently asymptomatic one month back. Later, she noticed the swelling over right side of the heart palate, which is insidious in onset and non progressive in nature. There is no history of difficulty in chewing, no history of trauma, no history of dental extraction, no history of ill fitting denture no history of radiation exposure and no history of excessive salivation and no history of other ENT complaints. Coming to the personal history, her diet was mixed, appetite is normal, bowel and bladder are regular and sleep is adequate and habits are nil. Menstrual uh, history, age of menarche was 13 years, at the age of 13 years, regular cycle and 30 day cycle, period lasts for 5 days and there was no dysmenorrhea. Family history and past history are not significant. Coming to the general examination, it is normal. ENT examination, oral cavity, mouth opening is adequate. Lips, gums, teeth, buccal mucosa, gingival buccal sulcus, gingival labial sulcus, uh, bilateral retromolar trigon and anterior two thirds of tongue are normal. Coming to the heart palate, on inspection, approximately 1.5 into 1.5 centimeter swelling was present over the right side of the heart palate. Mucous membrane over the swelling had bluish discoloration. Surface appears to be smooth and margins appears to be regular and there were no sinuses or tracks. And uh, extent was vertically 1 cm away from the inner gingiva extending from 1st premolar to 2nd molar and horizontally 0.5 cm from alveolar ridge and 0.5 cm away from the midline. On palpation, inspectory findings were confirmed. 1.5 into 1.5 cm swelling was present. Mucous membrane over swelling uh, uh, has bluish in color, cystic in consistency, non tender, doesn't bleed on touch, immobile, surfaces were smooth and margins were regular. Oropharynx was normal. Indirect laryngoscopy is normal. Neck examination, ear, ears, and nose are normal. Systemic examination is normal. And our uh, provisional diagnosis was mucosal over heart palate. Coming to the investigation of the patients, uh, her hemoglobin was 11.6 gram percentage and bleeding time was 1 minute 30 seconds, clotting time was 30, 3 minutes 20 seconds and HI, uh, viral markers are non-reactive. Random blood sugar was 81 milligrams per deciliter and blood grouping is O positive. Uh, coming to the treatment, we have done excision under uh, general anesthesia. Under sterile aseptic conditions, patient was intubated under uh, general anesthesia, painted and raped, 2% lignocaine with adrenaline inflammation given around the swelling, and in inverted U-shaped incision given above the swelling, and the flap and cystic uh, wall was separated in all directions. Then we have uh, we removed the uh, cystic wall completely till the bare bone is visible, and the hemostasis is achieved, and suturing is done with 3-0 vicryl. Uh, and cyst along it, uh, with its wall is removed and sent for the histopathological examination. After which, uh, we have uh, suggested a palatal obturator for the play, uh, you know, for the patient uh, to secure the sutures and prevent the investigations. Uh, so to prevent prevent the infections. This is a uh, intra of uh, pictures, immediate post of uh, pictures, and um, we, you can see the palatal obturator in the second slide, second picture. And in the histopathological report, sections uh, studied show coagulative necrosis of globular SNI and squamous metaplasia of its ducts. There was mucin uh, pooling and cystic spaces lined by low cuboidal epithelium and subepithelium showed uh, chronic inflammatory cell infiltration infiltrates. And there were fragments of hyperplastic stratified squamous epithelium. And all these suggest features suggest to of necrotizing CLO metaplasia. Coming to the discussion, necrotizing CLO metaplasia is a benign, self-limiting inflammatory reaction of the salivary gland tissue, which may mimic the squamous cell carcinoma or mucoepidermoid carcinoma, both clinically and histologically. It is most commonly affected site of, of the minor salivary glands of the palate. It can also be seen involving other sites like retromolar pad, gingiva, lip, tongue, cheek, cell cavity, sinuses, larynx, and trachea. Thank you. So, 
so hello sir since uh, the lockdown ke liye problem hai sir Okay. Uh, am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, I didn't log out. Actually, I'm unmuted. I need to be unmuted. Uh, I have logged in through my phone as well. Um, okay. Just a minute. Okay. Uh, Right. Uh, let's do a bit of dissection of your uh, presentation. Okay. Uh, please go to uh, your first slide. Yes. Your first slide. All right. Uh, so, if you have heard my presentation, you would have already observed that there are certain points which you need to work on. Correct. Yes, sir. Okay. So, number one, this is a case report. Yes, sir. Case report. You will have four minutes time plus two minutes question answer session. You yes, already sir. have exceeded slide limit. You are seventeen seven slides more. Yes, sir. Yes, so slides sir. are more. That is your first uh, feedback. Yes, and, sir. And uh, if you notice, uh, you have come out with a patient who has a right side palatal swelling for one month. Yes, sir. And which was uh, uh, asymptomatic and uh, progressed to the present condition. Insidious onset, non-progressive. Yes, if sir. Right, this bullet points it's enough. Yes, sir. And. Uh, there are too many negative histories. Okay, sir. Okay, so too many negative histories. Uh, so if you put the photo here uh, of your patient presenting, yes, sir. that will give already a good idea because a bluish uh, swelling, transluminant, uh, and uh, cystic swelling, just by the impression, already the judges know this is uh, mucosine. Yes, sir. All right. Now you are yes, creating sir. a bit of suspense here. Okay. Yes, right. yes, yes, so, sir. Uh, that is uh, adding to more uncertainty. Yeah. Okay, okay. So go to the uh, next slide. Yes. Okay. So here, uh, stick only to the positive findings. Okay. Regular sir. examination pro forma is not usually required. Okay. Okay. So okay, personal history, all those things, uh, if at all asked, you mention about it. Okay. Okay. Sir. Because okay, uh, in case this patient was a tobacco chewer uh, or something or uh, uh, consuming alcohol or any other form of tobacco. That you yes. can mention, okay, but I okay, have sir. not uh, seen uh, you just mentioned habits nil, okay. So yes, sir. you just write uh, only to the point. Some people will just mention he's married, two children. That is not relevant to his case, okay. Yes. Next yes. slide. Okay, all, all this history uh, may not be really significant because it doesn't add much to our uh, presentation. Okay? Yes, sir. So yes. this can all get skipped. Okay. Okay. We can okay. focus only on ENT examination. In yes. if there are any significant positive uh, information we got from systemic examination or local examination, which can correlate with our case, please add. Yes. Okay. 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 And uh, apart from this, you already stored okay the mucosine, but you didn't add anything about your differential diagnosis. The yes. question will be asked, uh, uh, what is the differential diagnosis? What else can you think apart from mucosine? Okay. okay. So. Okay. You should be in a position to justify, sir. Yes. I have done so and so investigation to confirm it is a mucosine. Yes. Sir. In your presentation, I don't see. Go to the investigation slide. Okay. You have done a clinical examination, correct? Yes. Sir. And yes, sir. there are no other investigation to tell it is mucosine, correct? Yes, sir. So this is one of the lacunas and deficiencies. Nobody would be interested to know what's his hemoglobin. And all those things, provided yes. if there is any other added factors that patient had a bleeding coagulopathy and other conditions, uh, which was interfering with his condition that you can mention. Okay, okay. but if at all it is significant only, so okay. you have to add an investigation of choice. Add important images like maybe CT scan, uh, or maybe in your particular case, a simple OPG also, or even if there is certain uh, uh, important. Uh, Investigation which will give diagnostic clues. Okay. In your case, it's more of a clinical examination. Um, how did you confirm it's a mucosal? Did it have any bone erosing uh, erosive activities? 
or it was a light occlusion or was it unifocal light occlusion or a multifocal light occlusion that you can yes. confirm only by ct scan correct yes sir. actually okay. we we didn't do the ct scan sir be uh, before yes now i know you most of the time uh, uh, residents will tell sir patient was not affordable patient uh, didn't uh, agree for all this but these are all certain things when you are presenting in a scientific session they usually want to listen to scientific data yes okay Yes. So, uh, somebody tomorrow, like uh, a resident, will be like uh, in the conference, they presented without any investigation. So, I can go ahead without investigation. Later, it turns out that uh, you have created a very big fistula and it has uh, led to some complication. So, yes. going prepared uh, before surgery is always a better uh, aspect. And it will also tell other candidates who are there that this is a stepwise protocol, working protocol to manage such case. Yes, sir. Okay. So, if his blood group is O positive and it doesn't add anything to a particular thing, it will not help. If okay. you tell that those are O positive people will have high predilection to develop mucosils in the uh, uh, head and neck means, uh, that's something different. I didn't know. Okay. Yes. But yes. we don't know much about this. Okay. So go to your next slide. Yes. And uh, you can cut down so many things. Now you have done surgery. Yes. Okay. You can say that. Uh, uh, one word very important because see you're presenting this patient's content in scientific session yes, after sir. written and informed consent patient was planned for surgery and uh, excision uh, was done under general anesthesia patient has given consent for uh, sharing the scientific content in forum like this or a publication whatever it is yes okay so yes, tomorrow uh, this patient may be somebody's relative and he is in the audience he yes, recognizes sir. the patient so please yes, fade the uh, eyes and uh, avoid any uh, identity issues, you know, like where it may be made public. Okay. Yes. You never yes. know. Okay. Yes. Yes. So uh, this patient might have been operated somebody elsewhere, and uh, you are presenting here, and that uh, doctor who was operated first, he is in the audience. You yes. Tell whatever you have done is wrong. So you yes. should always mention under uh, it, uh, you know written and informed consent, patient was taken up for surgery and excision done under GA, and only. Uh, the important photographs, okay? Yes, sir. And uh, this all you can explain. Yes, sir. Add photographs. If you have videos, you explain. Add important step photographs. That is also good enough because you will be more flexible to present and talk to the point, okay? Yes, yes right? sir. Yes. And uh, you did you counsel the patient that the patient will require obturator beforehand? Sir? Yes, yes, sir. Uh, that also you should tell. Okay. okay, because uh, uh, anyone in the audience will think mucosil will be marsupialization. That's all. Yes, sir. Okay, the and uh, you didn't show a CT scan image to tell that there is no bone in that area. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So that defect, if it had shown, uh, people would have been prepared. Okay, they will they'll ask you a question: What was your reconstructive methods? What are the alternative yes. reconstructive methods? They will yes. ask you: Why did you choose one day obturator? Uh, why you didn't choose any particle flap? What are the pedicle flap you can choose? Why didn't you use nasal labial flap for this case? Now yes, this patient will have obturator. He will have to remove it. Yes. Sir. And he will have to be dependent on it. But if you have given him a vascular flap, uh, you didn't involve plastic surgeon. Uh, the colonization will go on. Okay. Yes. Sir. Yes. So sir. there are certain deficiencies here and there. So this way you can answer them. So you okay. add a before image, intra-op image, and post-op image. Yes. Sir. Okay. So. Uh, in this patient, uh, if you usually are planning for if it's a malignancy and you want to uh, take a biopsy from the margins and then you are planning to send for radiation, it is well understood that you can use an obturator till then. Okay. Yes. yes uh, sir. But if you are using a flap later on, it depends, you know, uh, it can also get devascularized. So, yes, obturator may be planned like that. Okay. You are thinking more in favor of malignancy. Okay. Something yes, like that. So, yes, next is your uh, follow up image for wound healing. They will ask you how long did you follow up this patient if you tell yes. this couple of months then they will say your patient might have had recurrence or some complication yes. uh, so better to keep a, at least minimum one year follow-up okay yes. and uh, can you go to the next slide you had uh, microscopy correct histopathology oh, yes sir yeah as as and when possible uh, just go back you have no no just go back to the previous slide as and when possible avoid writing Hemostasis achieved uh, by 3-0 vicryl, all those things. And uh, when you're trying to focus the image, it has to be inside the oral cavity image proper. I can see yes. other structures here, so that's uh, better to avoid. Yes, sir. 
okay okay right okay. if you have taken observator have you taken measurement intra op yes sir ah, that photo is it there oh, that no, no so you have this uh, ready made uh, scale uh, with a marker which comes right yes so you can take that and get a rough idea okay, okay. So okay, that will give you some idea what is the size of your defect, whether it correlated clinically with your pre-op investigations. Okay. Because you are better prepared. Now here, I don't think you are prepared for this. Yes. Sir. So this is something decision which you have taken on the table. Yes, sir. Yeah, so this is something which uh, shows unpreparedness. Okay. Yes, the, I would commend uh, the uh, work done by the surgeon here. Okay, but he has taken a decision to place an obturator. But if yes, it were sir. for me, I would go for a flap. Okay. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Now, uh, please go to your histopathology slide. Okay. So, adding this is not necessary. Okay. You just have to add a photo of the histopathology. Go to your pathology department. Request from your HOD one letter, ma'am. I want a image of the slide. Crop it to a circle shape, just like how it happens in your Robbins or Harsh Mohan book, whichever you have read during your MBBS days, yes. where you just have the microscopy and you describe the findings. And you are most importantly, what they want to know: what is the lining epithelium? Is there any feature suggest of ATP? Okay, sir. Okay, and whether the margins are clear or not. Okay. And what sir. is the final diagnosis? Here you have copy pasted your entire yes. details, and yes. I don't even know whether it belongs to this patient. Yes. Now that you have already mentioned. It is taken like this, so it is understandable. Okay. Yes. So here you are. There is an important point: low-grade mucopodermoid carcinoma cannot be ruled out. Yes. Sir. Okay. So here there is a very important question, but you went on talking about necrotizing cialis. Yes. Okay. So this is one another important point where you have uh, probably deviated the audience to think more in terms of benign lesion or yes. a pre-malignant lesion. Okay. Yes. So try to, there are certain breaks all the way. Okay. Your yes. journey is not a smooth journey. It is going very complicated. Okay. Oh. Yes. Right. Go to the next slide. Right here, uh, I would suggest when you're talking about discussion, stick to your patient's photograph. Avoid Google photos. Okay. Sir. Okay. Uh, yes. Sir. Go to your next slide. Your uh, discussion should be in the basis of points. Okay, okay sir. no paragraphs. So, okay, what is sir. this? Uh, uh, go to your previous slide. So, in case uh, if somebody asks me what is this necrotizing CLO metaplasia, I should be in a position to say what is the prevalence of this condition? How yes, common sir. is this condition in India? How common is this condition when it compared to the Western condition? How common uh, these patients present? Where is the most common site? Uh, okay, and what is the treatment modalities available? If you somebody gives me this summary. Yes, sir. Uh, I can write an answer of 10 marks in question. Yes, sir. Okay, if I if any of you get necrotizing CLO metaplasia, uh, yes. only you will write the answer, others will not write. Yes, sir. So, your presentation should be a take home message for anyone. Uh, I read this particular presentation presented by one of the students, Dr. Pujita. I remember. Yes, sir. So, it should be that kind of a presentation. Okay, okay, sir. okay. Sir. Go to your next slide. Here you have mentioned the sites. Okay. Yes. So in your condition, it is mentioned in the palette. Is there yes. any word in the palette? Any word of palette in your presentation here? No. Okay. Uh, I have uh, mentioned here, sir. Here. Okay. Uh, so a uh, most commonly affected site is the minus, minus and of the palate. palate. Okay. So yes. that point has to be highlighted. Yes. Okay. So that okay. point is not highlighted. So it might get a miss. People okay. will see the next slide more importantly. Go next, okay. please. So here is where already people are already lost it and they are very tired. They already are ready to clap for you even before your thank you slide. So this is where you have exceeded time. Yes. Okay. So this is where you have to cut down on certain content which is not relevant. Okay. 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 So go to your next slide. Okay. With regards to your uh, uh, presentation, uh, this uh, uh, preferably try to add it in Vancouver's method because uh, this is not in the Vancouver's method. You have just uh, written it. Maybe see the first reference is taken from a website, correct? Yes, sir. So you should add, uh, there is a particular performa of how to cite a website reference. Okay, sir. Okay. I will do one thing. I will share it to uh, my colleague, Dr. Harsha. He will sir. send it to you. 
Then, okay. Suppose you are reading a magazine, a film fair magazine. If you want to cite some content, how to cite that is also there. Okay. Sir. You should just, uh, or if you have read a random uh, magazine, uh, which is a medical magazine, how to cite from there that is also there. Yes. So if it is from a newspaper, how to cite that as a reference that is also there. Okay. Sir. If it is from a website, uh, what to do that also is mentioned. Yes. Sir. If it is from a book, textbook. Like your uh, Dingra yes. or Scott Brown, how to cite that is also there. Yes, sir. you just have to follow that method. Okay, sir. but if it's a ready made uh, PubMed index journal, there is one option called Cite Now. You click it, you automatically get it. No need to worry about it. Yes, sir. there are many apps which will also automatically give citation. Yes, sir. so you just have to go ahead, and I think uh, that way you will stick it because these references are not in Vancouver's method, they are in different other methods. Yes, sir. okay, yes, so this. This one slide with unpreparedness. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, okay. This is your last slide. Yes, sir. Okay. So I don't know, uh, but these are my critical feedback. Okay. Uh, what did you get? Any message from this? Like, did you find it useful? Or uh, what was your feedback from after listening to my comments? Ah, uh, yes, sir. I'll definitely look uh, look into it, and I'll. Uh... Uh, consider these points, sir. So, Thank you. Thank stick to your time. Usually, uh, most of the time, uh, you will be in a rush, uh, and you have other speakers to listen to. Yes. And sir. you are exceeding their time. That way, yes. uh, the other uh, candidates may become very impatient. And stick to the time. Yes. Okay? Sure. Okay. Yes. Thank you, yes. sir. Right. Harsha, uh, I think uh, if there is any other candidate who is also there, we can help. Anyone with a case series, I think this is just a case report. Case series, anyone? Or if we have time, if we have time, we can discuss one. Yeah, case yes, sir. we have time. If anybody wants, they can come. Uh, now we have heard about a case uh, report. If anyone has a case series, uh, can raise your hands and uh, uh, we will uh, address them. You know, because we can get a variety addressed. On that template, we can work on this. So, any volunteers for case reports? For such just case just uh, come, we will help you. We'll see if at all there are any things you want guidance, we'll help you. Okay. So, this is one opportunity for you. Uh, don't feel uh, shy. And uh, if you learn certain things better, it will help you in the future. When is the state conference? Next week, sir. But uh, week, sir. this weekend we are doing virtually. Okay, okay, okay. So you want to shortlist some candidates for the final presentation, is it? Yes, yes. Okay, okay. We, we in Karnataka state conference also we received around 160 posters, e posters. We were told to shortlist 10 uh -huh. to be presented in the final day. So, Any... Dr. Shakina wants to present, I think. Yeah. Uh, is it a case series? Uh, please uh, check. Hello, sir. This yes. is case Hello. report, sir. Case report. Okay. Uh, yeah. uh, can I give one chance to somebody who has a case series? Because yes. case report, I already mentioned uh, certain points. You can oh. work on that basis. Uh, thank you, Dr. Sakina. In case nobody presents, I will go to Dr. Sakina's presentation. But okay, uh, I'll give some time for somebody who has a case series so that we can get to know their uh, presentation and how we can improve it. Yes. Uh, or uh, uh, I think uh, Dr. Harsha, all these candidates here are case report candidates or case series uh, candidates? We have mix of all, sir. Uh, then uh, you, uh, you have the abstract of them. Anybody who is online, uh, you can just tell them to request and, uh, you know, pick one of them. It's very difficult, no? You know, like right, right now, PG's uh, PG life also students are a little shy. They don't want to come forward. So, anyone uh, want to volunteer for the case series? I think some people are feeling shy, sir. <laughs> Uh, okay, we will listen to Dr. Sakina then. Dr. Sakina, you can unmute and uh, uh, you can uh, share your presentation now. 
ओके सर and uh, i would also like to request uh, dr ramesh sir and dr sudarshan reddy sir also to give their valuable feedbacks uh, uh, to the candidates uh, just in case if i have missed out any points because uh, we are, there are seniors uh, uh, you'll uh, get to know from their experience of what all presentation uh, deficiencies which are there hello sir is it visible sir Yes, I can see, but uh, just enable screen share. Uh, I mean, your uh, slide share uh, option. Go full screen, full screen, full screen, full screen. Press F5. Full screen. Full screen. What, sir? Press F5. Okay. okay. Uh, function key F5 on the top. I have yeah. done it. Okay. Uh, Okay, we'll do one thing. Just uh, stop your. See, I'm, no, no, do one thing. I'm asking for control. Okay, uh, we have sent control request. Just approve yeah, yes. the control. Up request. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Now I'm uh, taking control. One second. Okay. Uh, okay. There is some problem. Yeah, now it's okay. It's finished. Okay, I think you can control slides by yourself now. Yes, sir. Yeah, okay. You can go to your first slide, okay? Go to your first slide and uh, you can present. How many slides do you have, Ma? I have 22, sir. Okay, you already exceeded time. Okay, right. Fine. Go on. Start. Yeah. Presenting a case report of Vagal Chwanoma. Uh, introduction part is schwannoma, neurolemoma, or neuromas are benign tumors from originating from Schwann cells, which is rare and occur in the group age group of the third to sixth decade of life. With no sex prediction. Most of them occur in post tyloid compartment, and few are in pre tyloid compartment. Uh, so, is it our audible? Hello. Yes, yes, you are audible. Yes, Please sir. Proceed. Half of them occur in head and neck region. These are encapsulated, slow-growing, mostly solitary, can arise from peripheral nerves, nail nerves, sympathetic chain, cervical nerve roots, brachial plexus. Schwannomas in temporal bone can be vestibular, which is more common, trigeminal, second common, jugular, facial schwannomas. Vestibular schwannomas are the commonest and account for 7% of all intracranial tumors, and the surgical resection remains the mainstay of treatment. Here we have a case report of 29 year old male female uh, male patient presented to ENT OPD with complaint of swelling in the right side of neck since 15 months, which is insidious in onset, gradually progressed to present size. There is no history of pain, difficulty in swallowing, difficulty in speech, and hoarseness of voice. On examination, a single swelling of 4.5 into 3 was found on the right side of the neck just below the angle of mandible. In its upper one third of sternocleido mastoid muscle. Skin over the swelling is normal, smooth surface and firm in consistency. It was non pulsatile and non tender. Swelling, mobile only in horizontal plane but not vertically. There was no history of previous surgery and the routine investigation was done. It was normal and systemic examination was normal and ideal was normal. And we have done investigation. Uh, like ultrasonography, where it is heterogeneous hypoechoic lesion of 4.3 into 2.8 centimeters just posterior to the right submandibular gland, causing splaying of surrounding jugular vein and posterior part of submandibular gland, taking flow on Doppler. FNAC was done, which is moderately cellular smears consisting of spindle shaped elongated cells with elongated baby nuclei arranged in bundles. MRI showed well encapsulated oval shaped. Hyperintense lesion in right carotid space extending from angle of mandible to the level of laryngeal inlet. This space common carotid medially and jugular vein laterally. No evidence of flow void signal. This is an MRI scan report where this is a lesion of vagal uh, schwannoma. Here the treatment part is excision of the mass under GA, which is we have done in trans cervical approach. 
this is an intraoperative view of mass. After uh, taking uh, HP, pigs encapsulate in mass with cells arranged in groups and lobules separated by fibrous septa. Few areas show cystic spaces lined with flattened epithelium. On follow-up, the patient has no neurological deficit. Pre- and post-operative ideal was normal. This is the discussion part. Hello? Yes. Uh, please go on. Proceed. Yeah, vagal nerve schwannoma is a rare benign tumor arising from the nerve sheath with incidence of 5%, which are common tumors of jugular fossa followed by glossopharyngeal schwannoma. These tumors present as a slow-growing thinless mass, which on cough on palpation of the mass is unique to vagal schwannoma. Due to the rarity of this tumor, these are missed in differential diagnosis of neck masses like carotid body tumors, glomus vagal, paragangliomas, neurofibromas, and lymphomas. Vagal schwannoma displaces the common carotid anteriorly and medially, while schwannomas of cervical sympathetic chain doesn't. The investigation parts are USD, ultrasonography, FNAC, MRA, CT has to be done. Ultrasound would differentiate between schwannoma and neurofibroma. In schwannoma, this tumor is eccentric and usually hypervascular. In contrast to neurofibroma, where the nerve is in the center of the lesion and tumor is less vascular. FNAC shows two patterns, Antony type A and Antony type B. The Antony A is elongated spindle cells with palisade of nuclei around central mass, whereas B is hypocellular zone loosely arranged sp spindle cells in myxoid stroma. And the Veroque body's characteristics of schwannoma, however, seen in only few cases. Typical features are cystic degeneration, hemorrhage, or necrosis in the tumor. On CT, appears a well-defined mass with higher attenuation than the muzzle. Schwannomas causes small, smooth, bony erosions of jugular foramen. On MRI, these tumors are iso-intense in T T1 weight image and hyper-intense in T2, which is seen in this case. Carotid body tumors and glomus vagal enhances CT and MRI with characteristic salt and pepper appearance due to the flow voids frequently noted in these masses. Carotid angiography has to be done to know the flow through the carotids. Surgical removal is a mainstay of treatment with aim of preserving whenever possible. More than half of the cases show post-op neural defect due to the atrogenic injury. Some cases where nerve has to be sacrificed for the removal of the tumor, followed by end anastomosis of the nerve. In other cases, through transcervical approach, tumor dissected separately without any intraoperative injury to the nerve. Recurrence of the tumor is rare and risk of malignant transformation is unusual. Thank you. Okay, fine. Uh, presentation uh, was uh, very elaborate and uh, we know about, uh, you know, cervical schwannomas. Uh, all right. Now, just I will... Uh, Go to your first slide, please. As much as possible, uh, stick to the time. Okay, sir. And add uh, not more than, you know, seven lines in a particular slide. Okay. The slides are pretty crowded. And uh, my suggestion would be uh, to, you know, highlight important points. Schwannomas or neurilamomas are benign tumors. Uh, third to sixth decade, no okay. sex predilection, confined to posterior stellar compartment, percentage, how much of them occur in head and neck region. If you write that much, it's fine. Here you need not prepare sentences. You just need to bullet points. Okay, same thing applies. Your introduction background should be not more than one or two slides. Here okay. it is two slides. Just keep it to one. Okay, okay. So next particular case report, I am here to present about uh, neck schwannoma. Okay, and then you give your description of your case presentation, what was done immediately, ultrasound. Then what was done next, FNSC. Then what was done next, you have done MRI. Uh, MRI. Yeah. So MRI, you 
characteristically mentioned even uh, what are the uh, findings what are the structures surrounding that area and uh, what is your working diagnosis after seeing this working diagnosis looks like a schwannoma it can uh, it can be an, uh, any other thing as well what are the differential diagnosis can you answer some questions uh, regarding this what are the differential diagnosis it can just be a branchial cleft cyst carotid body tumors carotid body tumors Lomas. what else um, can you think of Lomas. So, the images the images are good uh, what are the intraoperative complications which you have to look out when you're operating this case? Yeah. Uh, yeah. What, nerve damage, vagus nerve damage. No, that is okay. That you will see where it is getting attached. Usually there will be a plane of dissection for you to remove it safely. Sometime it might be involved. But when you're handling that particular nerve, what are the uh, subtle changes which you will come to know, which the anesthetist will keep on informing you? Anybody in the audience? The anesthetist will tell you, sir, please stop handling the tissue. There is something happening and it, we are recording in the monitor. What can you visualize? You are closer to the carotid bodies. There are yeah. barrel receptors and your vagus nerve is also there. Sometimes overstimulation may lead to bradycardia. Bradycardia, sometimes patient may go into certain complications. Okay. So... In your case, was any such uh, thing happening? Any such yes. issues of bradycardia? Okay, you can mention that. And here uh, you have mentioned different views. One in axial views, but uh, do you have any other views? Only axial views you have taken. Yes, sir. Only and, axial. Uh, yeah, so it becomes a little difficult to share other interpretation uh, around the surrounding structures. This axial view is good. But if you can add coronal views and sagittal views, which will highlight the important uh, in three-dimensional way, it will also give you better. Okay. And go to your next slides. The surgical steps are all done well, very nicely operated. I think in the post-op uh, follow-up, some amount of wound gaping is there. It will heal well. Nothing to worry. But the scar is an acceptable scar. But one more thing which you should have done is uh, when you're removing such things, uh, if it is very close to the cervical sympathetic chain, any documentation of, uh, you know, uh, Horner Inform syndrome, concern. Horner syndrome, yeah, Horner's. yeah, all these things, all right, that should be done. And uh, in this image, if you noticed, you have added a syringe uh, and the background is all soaked with blood, correct? Yes. When you are taking a photograph, it's like, you know, you're taking a photograph of uh, something, uh, you better have a proper one more sheet kept, which is not soaked with blood, okay? Just for presentation, it's like uh, you are serving, uh, you go to a restaurant, he serves you food, but it is not uh, well served. It is haphazard. You will you eat it, you will probably be a little taken back. So I'm not telling about this, but generally when you keep the specimen, it has to be kept in a clear background, preferably a scale or in your case, you have added syringe, no problem. But that blood soaked cloth should not be there. This is what my teachers have told me. Better to have uh, good. And even while operating, if your surrounding linen is completely soaked and when you're capturing images, better to get a separate uh, linen, uh, uh, you know, to drape and take photographs. Okay. Because uh, uh, your audience, somebody will uh, comment. Okay. So this is just for presentation. Okay. How neat is your presentation? How neat is your dissection? How have you respected tissue planes? Okay, so all this will be judged. Go down. Next slides. Histopathology, pretty much. Uh, yes, uh, you should uh, highlight uh, important things. These are all low magnified images. Low magnified images are uh, pretty much there. It gives a sense of clueliness. You know, they just give you. It's a bit clueless about what you exactly you're talking about. Uh, you are you have shown some markers uh, where it is pointing out to something. But classically, Antony A, Antony B, if you just showed that this particular thing, that will aid more in diagnosis. All right? Okay, sir. Okay, please, next. Okay. Uh, here, uh, you have mentioned everything in points, which is good. Okay, next. And when you are, uh, and uh, I appreciate the fact that you have taken an image of the patient with eyes closed and did the proper background. Keep it to green color. Uh, something right so that it is a uniform background okay 
<laughs> all this uh, discussion points you can mention it in bullet points uh, that will give a proper uh, you know uh, orientation of things you can cut down a lot of text okay a lot of text can be cut down you can just write important points because you will get exhausted by the time you finish your presentation you should be comfortable speaking at the end of it you should also be comfortable answering questions okay. yeah yeah so that way go down next all these are theory they are well put but it needs to be concise okay right okay. so Thank discussion you. not more than two slides oh okay. yes yeah. so try to reserve some space for it next this yeah slides are just increasing okay these are all extra time buying extra time uh, yeah. not permitted at least for case report Okay, case so I'll report, cut it off. Case report, if it cut by 10, you know, 10, not more than 10 slides. Okay, in case you have a lot of images and you want to show them, fine. But uh, your time is also important. You lose marks on time. Okay, sir. I'll right. cut down. Mm -hmm. Thank you, sir. Right, fine. And I don't see your references here. Okay. Uh, I have to put down that. Yeah. So please come prepared. References should be put in the proper citation. There are two methods, American method of citation and Vancouver's method of citation, whichever you are comfortable with. But I would suggest PGs to follow Vancouver's method of citation. Okay. All right. Okay. So my assignment, which I have to help is I have to send one copy of this presentation. Number two, I will send how to cite references that I will be sending to Dr. Harsha. Okay. That is my work. Okay. okay, so I hope uh, students have benefited, but if somebody had presented a case in the series, I would help them even better because now we have a good orientation of how to present a case report, but uh, some of one amongst the audience, if they have a case series, uh, we can help and, uh, you know, uh, Arsha, if we don't have anyone, I think uh, we should stop here. Or if there is any queries, we can take. You can stop share screening, Dr. Sakina. Yes, sir. Control from control, controlling, sir. Okay, one second. Uh, stop control. Uh, all right. All right, uh, fine. Uh, okay, Harsha, any 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 further queries? Sir, Harsha, uh, sir, we will come back in five ten minutes, sir. Till then, we can continue. Okay. Any any uh, any further queries which we can take? Uh, anybody who has a case series uh, where we can address? Good evening, sir. I have case series, sir. Case series. Who? Uh, you, can you introduce yourself? Yes, I'm Dr. Sri Shailam, sir. Okay. Uh, I'll just make you the presenter. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm just passing that option. Yes. Uh, can you uh, share your screen? Yes, I'm sharing. Uh, you are the presenter now. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I'm Please uh, 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 see your voice just cracked a bit. Uh, try to go to a place where there is good signal. Okay. Yes. Uh, yeah. Okay. Sir. Yeah. I, I will go, sir. Yeah. Now uh, you are presenting case series, uh, Dr. Uh, Trishalam. Yes, sir. I'm presenting case. Uh, so, uh, my only question is how many slides you have? 23 slides. Sir. 23 slides. Fair enough. Okay. Let's listen to you. Okay. Please proceed. Yes, sir. So, good evening, all. Uh, today, my case series uh, hydrogen peroxide as a hemostatic agent in transcriptome bleed. So, the pattern does, sir, uh, components of immune system, trans immunological, more active first years of life. 
after multiple episodes of acute infection, bacteria inoculate into the core of the tonsil and produce symptoms like sore throat, fever, like that. These infections are highly frequently, uh, especially in childhood. Although antibiotic therapy is usually su sufficient for acute tonsillitis, so uh, tonsillectomy is a treatment of choice in recurrent and chronic tonsillitis. So despite despite the commonest and simplest surgery, the surgeon keep an eye on uh, high risk complications of tonsillectomy. In like intra and post operative hemorrhage, which may even lead to shock and death. Hydrogen peroxide is produced mainly in many different human cell types, like uh, fibroblast, vascular endothelial smooth muscle cells, and inflammatory cells. It plays a key role in regulating vascular smooth muscle cell growth, differentiation, and vascular inflammation. So, delivering this hydrogen peroxide into the wounds, it kills the fibroblast and occludes local microvasculature. When H2O2 dissociates, it forms water and nascent oxygen. This nascent oxygen has oxidative properties and this helps in achieving surface antimicrobial clearance. Apart from that, uh, other mechanism is of H2O2. They include uh, increase the calcium influx from intracellular stores in the smooth muscle cells, leading to formation of cyclooxygenase related postmites, activation of enzymes and activation of potassium channels, and generation of hydroxy free radicals. The types of bleed uh, in translectomy are primarily venous and the mucosa bleed. The local pressure usually given with the uh, cotton ball sopurin in NS. In our study, we have so, uh, cotton ball sopurin 3% H2O2 to apply pressure in the fossa. So, the uh, concentration of H2O2 to be used has been widely studied in the study. Or the, in, the, in our study, the parameters are amount of blood loss and time taken from first incision to hemostasis. Coming to materials and methods, sample size is 100, 133. Statistic analysis, it was performed using the SPSS statistics. Uh, P value is 0 0.05, was significantly, <coughs> statistically significant. The confidence interval was set as 95%. Inclusion criteria age between 6 to 30 years, hemoglobin more than 10 grams. Clinically diagnosed chronic translators by the paradise criteria. Exclusion criteria, bleeding and clotting disorders, enlarged tonsil, which is not chronic tonsillitis, like example, neoplasm, abscess, pregnancy and lactation, chronic systemic illness, unilateral tonsillosis. Coming to preoperative assessment, all the 133 patients underwent detailed examination, uh, history, uh, examination of ear, nose, throat, and head and neck. If the patient was found to have chronic tonsillitis, they were asked for consent to be part of our study and uh, general anesthesia. All the patients with consent were included in our study. Intraoperative assessment, all the patients underwent translatomy under general anesthesia. To avoid surgery and bias, all the surgeries was performed by same surgeon with the set, same set of instruments. For the purpose of convenience, uh, all the tonsils on the right were included in group one and the left were included in group two. The first, uh, first parameter used was the time taken from first incision to achieving complete hemostasis. As soon as the first incision was placed, the timer was started. Suction was not used throughout the surgery because uh, to calculate the exact amount of the bed loss. In group one, on the right side, the cotton was soaked in the normal saline and placed in the fossa. The gentle pressure was applied by using left index finger. In group two, on the left side, cotton was soaked in H2O2 and placed in the fossa with gentle pressure by applying right index finger. The cotton ball was left for 30 seconds, after which it was removed, the fossa was inspected for any bleed. Air was taken not to use more than 10 ml of solution in both groups. The second parameter was amount of blood loss on each side. <clears throat> the volume of normal saline and H2O2 was abstracted. The volume of blood in the pack was calculated by the dividing the weight of the blood and the pack by specific gravity of the blood. Among 133 patients, 23 of them had bleeding which could not be controlled by packing and local pressure. So, the sample size come down to 110. Post-operative assessment, all the patients received the same set of antibiotics and analgesics. POSA was visualized every 6 hourly for next 2 days to for any evidence of secondary hemorrhage. So, no complications are reported. Observation and results. Uh, in our study, 45% were male and 65% were female. The maximum age, in our age group was 15 to 20 years. In group one, where NS was used to achieve hemostasis, it took 14 minutes, 29 seconds on average from the first incision to completion of hemostasis. 
in group 2 where h2o2 was used to achieve hemostasis it took 12 minutes 15 seconds on average from the first insertion, insertion to completion so the time in group 2 was 14% lesser than the group 1 the average blood loss in group 1 was 56 ml and in group 2 same value uh, 47 ml so the blood loss in group 2 was 16% lesser than the group 1 the significance was found to be 0.001 in both the groups so is 65% male and 45% female the age group uh, mostly we use 15 to 20 years the uh, the time taken from uh, uh, where we, we, we use the ns was 14 min uh, 14 minutes h2o2 12 minutes amount of blood loss 56 in uh, ns and 47 in h2o2 discuss the beneficial effects of uh, adrenal peroxide of plenty uh from its uh, effectiveness to that of a very less effects of side, very few side effects we have studied the same in our study and results pointed that the amount of blood loss and time taken from first incision to hemostasis was <laughs> very reduced with h2o2 compared to ns as a broad categorization the bleed got divided into venous and mucosal the venous bleed mostly from the peritonsillar vein and mucosal bleed accelerated by the movement of the muscles of anterior and posterior pillar so based on data there is evidence that the h2o2 can be used instead of various combinations of adrenaline lignocaine bupropen to control primary hemorrhage in post translectomy so coming to conclusion 3% hydrogen, hydrogen peroxide is a potent agent as a micro antimicrobial activity and hemostatic agent in uh, place in the answer post and post translectomy these are the references okay just uh, hold it okay. yes sir uh, go to your first uh, reference slide yes sir okay uh, all right okay the references seem to be fine but uh, there are uh, uh, many authors you can just write for example uh, fourth author muttu babu k et al yes, okay and here you have added a uh, american method of uh, citation the year has come first okay okay, okay. all those things all these methods are american uh, system of methods you have maintained it that is fine okay 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 so that is not a problem yeah, because if you're showing mixture of both the vancouver and american then it will be a confusion you are following one method consistently it's fine all right okay all right. okay go to the next slide next a reference slide yes next, sir next yeah okay fine right uh, go uh, see uh, in only one of your slide you have mentioned that you are using hydrogen peroxide as 3% that is the last slide correct yes sir in conclusion uh, why why you didn't put that because uh, here different uh, concentration of hydrogen peroxides are available whether you use the same uh, hydrogen peroxide we are not sure and uh, it is better to always show the image of the hydrogen peroxide whichever you are using yeah sir because they, they are available in different concentration and another thing is uh, whether you are diluting uh, hydrogen peroxide or not uh, that is another question okay, okay. and uh, directly if you place hydrogen peroxide in mucosal cavity it will lead to chemical uh, cauterization kind of an effect it will lead to some amount of burning sensation Okay. okay. So okay. you have used uh, it's a very good uh, control methods you have done. Uh, that right side uh, you have used as uh, this thing. Uh, normal saline. Uh, normal saline and left side is uh, hydrogen peroxide. If you are mentioning as uh, uh, undiluted hydrogen peroxide, uh, it will be a matter of concern because sometimes that can also lead to some amount of reactionary. Uh, Uh, some kind of an irritation and uh, something like that but some people they have used uh, concentrated uh, only they have no effects but some people prefer to use uh, diluted because they don't want the oral cavity to develop any mucositis okay, okay. so you should know that you are keeping it only in the fossa not the mucosa and all things and you have kept for a minimum time of how much time in each 30, year, seconds. 30 seconds okay so that is also an important thing uh, another thing which uh, these are confounding factors is many a time uh, we use uh, uh, dissection and snare method 
But here you have not mentioned which type of tonsillectomy you have done. Whether you have done cobulation, uh, by monoclonal that you should mention. What type of tonsillectomy method was followed? You have mentioned that okay. all surgeries are done by single surgeon. Very good. But what is the method yes. of tonsillectomy followed in this presentation? If you can mention that all uh, uh, patient underwent tonsillectomy by dissection and snare method or whichever method, okay. because each method will have its own advantage, disadvantage with regarding to hemostasis, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, so that way we can come to know. Say you have done cobulation, hardly any bleeding. Uh, but uh, if you have done dissection and snare, there is more likely. But I understand you are done, you are using incision. So. Uh, mm -hmm. It is understood it is dissection and snare, but it's better to write it. And okay. uh, moreover, uh, if you have used a snare, it will crush it. Uh, sometimes people like to use cobulation or cautery uh, when they come to the lower pole or they may just tie a ligature. Uh, whether have you ligated in these cases uh, or used uh, ties to ligate these cases, that also are certain confounding factors. If you have dissected okay. to the plane and you have done uh, just a dissection and snare method, then uh, in the fossa I have just kept uh, for 30 seconds and then I apply compression. Uh, that is fine. But you should remember that our normal bleeding time, clotting time is 2 to 8 minutes. Okay. okay. So I would at least to be on the safer side, uh, do a bit of cheating here by telling that we have left it for 2 minutes. Okay. Okay. Because three, 30 seconds is not good enough. Because when we remove the uh, cotton uh, and we normally examine the fossa, if at all there is a slight ooze, that is not active bleeding. If the fossa fills okay. up in 30 seconds, that is when I would declare that it is active bleeding. Correct? Okay, sir. Uh, when we see that the fossa is filling up in 30 seconds completely like a brim uh, of water mm. or something, uh, I would see that there is some bleeding. And if there is a very small ooze, I will not go running behind it or chasing behind it. Okay, because as you clerically mentioned, it is all venous bleeding, correct? Yes, sir. Okay, then go to your first slide first. We'll just do some dissection of your slides. Okay, uh, it is okay. presented well, but uh, thing is, it is not overcrowded. You just have to cut down on this. Go to the next slide. Yes, sir. So, here you have to give a good title. Go back. I'm assuming okay. you've already uh, submitted your abstract. Hydrogen yes, peroxide as a hemostatic agent in. Tonsillectomy bleed. It is uh, better to use the uh, intraoperative tonsillectomy uh, to assess for because uh, you are assessing post tonsillectomy or intraoperative uh, bleeding. Intraoperative. That you should mention because yeah, uh, okay. uh, the heading. If you, because uh, if you like a movie, it is based on the title of the movie. If the title yes, of the movie is very vague, then you will not understand what it is. So it should be catchy. Okay. So that is okay. my request. Hydrogen yeah, peroxide okay. uh, versus uh, normal saline. Hydrogen peroxide versus normal saline uh, to assess for post tonsillectomy bleeding. Okay. Uh, during during intraoperative. Okay. During intraoperative. Intraoperative assessment of tonsillectomy bleed by using hydrogen peroxide versus normal saline. How is this for a treatment? Okay. okay? okay. Uh, so this way you can do it. So okay. Next, okay. Next slide, please. Yeah, this all okay. You have also mentioned uh, uh, references. Uh, to spare you some time, I'll give you a small tip. Okay. Okay. Uh, nice. Instead of adding references slides in the end, okay. here you have left some space below. Now you mm. can cite uh, references. One reference is taken from here, just below as small letters, small text. You can keep citations okay. here also. Okay. Okay. So okay. the audience will know. Okay. The first slide is taken from this. Second slide is taken from this. So you need not add a, a separate slide for references. Okay. You are understanding small uh, lines you can keep in the same slide below. Okay. That this okay, material okay. is taken from this uh, journal. This material. So it ends the question there. Okay. Okay. Usually when you show a big okay. list of references, uh, hardly people will focus on it. It is like in the end of the movie. People do always uh, just just get up, no? They shubham means they just leave the. They nobody will be there to even see the credits. Correct. Yes, yes sir. Something like that. I'm just giving you practical ex, uh, you know, experiences. Whatever we go. Next. Next. Next slide. Uh, keep it to less content. Okay. So, uh, what are the uh, this thing? This is, these are all free radical related. 
mechanisms for mm -hmm. vasoconstriction. If I have to summarize this slide in one line, I should say there are mechanisms uh, based on calcium influx. Uh, on that basis, they are a free radical induced uh, vasoconstriction mechanism. If I have to summarize, instead of okay. everything, I just gave you one line uh, answer. Okay. Okay. Right. Next. If you have any diagrammatic representation of how, how hydrogen peroxide works, if you can add that, that is also good. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And uh, yeah, said three percent H two O. Yeah. So you mentioned here that is fine, and yeah, okay. uh, uh, try to limit the number of uh, text. Okay. Keep uh, okay. it to minimum. Okay. Not more than seven lines. Okay. Next. Okay. Okay. So usually my method of assessment will be. Uh, introduction, uh, aims and objectives. I have to see aims and objectives. I have not seen that word. You have missed it. Okay. okay. Please write aims and objection objectives. Then materials and uh, okay. methods. So uh, you have written 133 uh, sample size. Fine. What uh, it is a prospective case control study. Correct. Yes, sir. This you have to mention. And uh, statistical okay. analysis were done using SPSS 19. Uh, significant value, you have to mention less than 0 0.05 was considered significant. Confidence interval uh, equal to 95%. That's all. You just mentioned this line as points. Yes, okay. Here you have mentioned as paired T test. The moment you mentioned paired T test, it's already understood it is case control study. Okay, but it's better to add uh, this one. This you have directly copy pasted. That's all I can understand. Correct? Yes, sir. Uh, right. Next. So, inclusion criteria, exclusion criteria, very good. You have mentioned that is fine. Next, pre operative assessment uh, also is fine, uh, but you should less your, uh, lessen your number of text. Okay. Pre operative okay. assessment should be uh, 133 patients uh, with chronic tonsillitis, consent for uh, surgery, and uh, which age group uh, which did you take uh, that also you should mention as a summary. Because okay. if you have taken extremes of age group, they all respond differently. Okay. Okay. So my suggestion would be 15 to 45 years age group. Okay. It will lessen your uh, burden of taking the extreme values because you have told confidence interval is 95%. Okay. So yes, if I have to go more in depth, it is like that uh, bell shaped curve. You want to get more of your values between 15 to 45 age group. Okay. On okay. that basis, I will be focusing on. Okay. Next. Interoperative assessments, you just have to put it in a tabular column uh, so that it becomes easy. If I have to look uh, control group, right side, uh, and uh, test group, that is H2O2 group, left side, make tables. It becomes easy. Single okay. surgeon operated and uh, uh, what are the methods of assessment? Uh, you have to say whether it is dissection and snare method or any other thing. Okay. okay. All right. Next slide, please. Make tables and charts, it will be very much uh, appreciated. Okay. So, okay. Uh, all these points, uh, whichever there are, you should just give uh, a chart uh, like patient one, patient two, patient three. If you have a chart which will show everything, that will be pretty much explanative. If you just say, I have shown five patient slides. So, the operative time starts now, then uh, bleeding time, clotting time, whatever it is, uh, when I used hydrogen peroxide, or what was the time? If we can see as a statistics, uh, I mean, it's like a chart, it will be much easier. Okay. Right. Okay. So that way your slide uh, content also will cut down maximum. Okay. Already you have uh, you have presented well, but I want you to make it uh, presented uh, with a lot of uh, these tables, slides, uh, and uh, uh, your uh, pie charts, uh, histograms, and uh, okay. flow charts. All this way, so that it becomes easy for us to follow. Okay. Yes. We want to listen to you. We don't want to, to see what we what you are reading. You understand? Okay. Okay. Yes. Sir. Yeah. Hmm. Next. Yeah. Okay. Same thing. Uh, concise. Make it tabular. Okay. And here, make it okay. instead of thirty seconds, please make it two minutes, because yeah, okay. time clotting time is two to eight minutes. Okay. Right. Okay, okay. See, if you have to convince someone, it has to be uh, scientifically convincing. Okay. It has 30 seconds is too less to probably see because the moment you remove it and you just turn a peak or just 
as system for one more cotton or any other instrument the posa has already filled up okay now okay. so please okay. keep it for two minutes because normal breeding time plotting time two to eight minutes okay okay yeah and uh, you should uh, be very clear about that photograph of the cotton because see, each sister will prepare cotton balls differently correct Yes, sir. Uh, so our sister will be uh, preparing uh, cotton ball which is soaked with uh, hydrogen peroxide. So what is the weight of a normal cotton ball? What is the weight of a cotton ball which is soaked? She might put it for the cotton ball longer time. Okay. So okay, okay. Uh, you don't know whether she is giving it a dried uh, in the sink, uh, wet cotton ball. So how much is that is acceptable? So you should say that only 3 ml of uh, uh, or 1 ml. You can do analysis of how much ml was used. One ml of three percent, two ml of three percent, four ml of three percent. We don't know because there is some bias already in that. Now we are That's using it. adrenaline, kada. Adrenaline. That's we are it. using a one in one thousand raw concentrated adrenaline. Now in case we are diluting, how much have we diluted? One in one thousand, one in ten thousand, one in twenty, one lakh. Each concentration will have different hemostatic effect. Right. Yes, yes. So here there is some bias in that. If you can work on adding some slides to clear that doubt, it's pretty much better. All patients okay. I used only three ml uh, of undiluted hydrogen peroxide. Okay. Okay. Is that okay. way you can get to this thing because I'm just telling you something to add on to improvise to make it okay understandable and okay. Yes, this much was used for all the cases because there is okay. already some bias how much was used, whether the less was used or it was just mildly soaked or something because each results will vary. Okay, next. Okay, so all these parameters, uh, whatever used and what gauze pieces uh, to put a photograph 10 into 10 centimeters, where you will use for what and uh, all this you can just uh, put it in the form of a chart. Uh, out of them, 23 had bleeding, but you told uh, there were no complications. Maybe you are talking about post-operative complications. Okay. Yes, Intraoperative yes. complications, 23 is the problem. So you excluded them from the study. Okay. So that you should mention in the exclusion criteria. Go back to the exclusion criteria, patient who had bleeding in the excessive bleeding in the time of surgery. So bleeding and clotting disorders, you mentioned that's fine. And those who are having okay. excessive bleeding because of your uh, iatrogenic injury. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, okay. You would have gone and hit something and uh, it could have started bleeding. Huh? So that also becomes exclusion criteria. Iatrogenic induced bleeding because bleeding and clotting disorders may not be there. Some patients may have it, some patients may not have. But when you do a very wrong surgery without a proper plane of dissection, then you are inducing bleeding by yourself because it's all very vascular structures. Okay, go okay. to that slide. Next. Okay, post operative assessment, all this make it tabular column, tabular chair. All these things are a lot of text. Already people would have got tired looking at your presentation. So just make points, points. Okay, no okay. complication okay. of any sorts were reported. These are post operative complications. You already mentioned in your slide that uh, you excluded uh, after excluding those uh, people who are bleeding. Uh, yes. what, what, how did you manage those 23 patients? What did you do? They'll ask you just like that out of curiosity. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they'll say, sir, I did uh, ligation uh, okay. uh, tie or I did bipolar cautery uh, or uh, we used cobulation, whatever it is. You should mention something. Okay. okay, next. All this assessment should be on the basis of observation and results. All should be charts. Don't no, add uh, because all this you already mentioned in your pie and your, uh, uh, you know, the pie chart and all those things that are 65 are female. Why to add unnecessary? Repeat same thing. Uh, you put this and uh, just mention talk orally. Okay. okay sir. And here you have mentioned uh, that you have uh, 65 male and 59 percent in bracket you put because this looks 65, 59 and they will get confused. Okay. Okay. So you can okay. do that 65 and in brackets 59 percent. Okay. And uh, okay. In the, try to add uh, the colors which are different. So suppose you have used uh, yellow and orange here. Same yellow and orange uh, should not appear here. Some different color it should appear. Otherwise, they'll all look same. Okay. Okay. Try to okay. Add those six. Okay. Next. Uh -huh. All right. See, uh, those who are sitting in the back, uh, they will find this slide very difficult to read. So you okay. enlarge it and add according to that. 
and uh, and shall. here it shows mean and median but my suggestion would be to put a histogram uh, which will suggest uh, this thing okay next okay uh okay fine uh next yeah see here you, you are saying that significant 0 0.001 this is okay next mm -hmm. yeah discussion is also fine but i want discussion to get over in two slides okay a lot of crowded uh, materials are there and my suggestion would be discussion would be better to add your study versus some other study conducted recently okay okay, okay. Next slide. So I would like you to take cross reference from other slides, uh, other uh, present, I mean other studies to compare your data because you've already added so many. So here, based on the data obtained, uh, they have said that there are there is enough evidence to prove hydrogen peroxide is useful in combination uh, 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 to be used instead of various combination like adrenaline, lignocaine, and bupivacaine. Uh, just make sure that adrenaline uh, spelling is corrected. Okay. Uh, adrenaline okay yeah okay, okay. and uh, rest all things are fine but you should cite references uh, what made you say this uh, adrenaline can be okay to control i want a citation number on this okay next okay. next please yeah so conclusion also uh, just make it in bullet points no paragraphs please Okay. okay yeah next that's it okay so okay. thank you dr sri shalom i think uh, thank you. you can take some valuable feedback points and uh, make it even more concise okay and uh, you can show videos also uh, i did like this i put that there will be more convincing okay okay so something like uh, you have done around a lot of cases 100 you show that this is how we put in the right side left side because seeing is believing okay that is what okay. I would say. Okay. Okay. Fine. Thank you. I think uh, we should end it here because we given uh, we have given almost quality some two hours of time. Okay. So, uh, Harsha. Sir. Uh, sir, thank you very much, sir, uh, for volunteering your time. Yeah, uh, my child is about to cry now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Sorry. Sir, uh, 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 fine. I think uh, we'll end it here. Okay. Ramesh sir uh, would give some concluding remarks. Yes, please. I think sir is having some audio issue. Uh, issue here. Huh? Anyway, sir, thank you very much, sir, uh, for uh, uh, coming in and uh, giving your valuable inputs. I'm sure uh, most PGs uh, must have learned. Uh, lot of new points and I request everyone to change your presentations. I've been going through your presentations since evening and uh, most of your presentations are really, uh, really, they really need a lot of rework up if you really want to win a medal or um, any good uh, prizes. Once again, uh, thank you, sir. And uh, we'll, I wish you all the best for our case reports and case series starting from tomorrow onwards. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Dinesh, sir. Good night. Thank you, Dinesh, sir. Thank you. All the best, all the postgraduates. Thank you. All the best to the PGs uh, for the presentation. Do well. So, Dinesh, sir, please consider our request also. I have sent in the message. Sorry for the yes, sir. Uh, sir, I'll, uh, I will try, sir. I will come and uh, attend. <laughs> sir, okay.